Okay, it's nine o'clock and I am signing on for my talk on boundaries. I am gonna wait for some of you to join and then I'm gonna start, but I do um, wanna try to keep it short because I know it's hard for you guys to listen for too long. So I'm gonna wait for people to join and then I'll start this talk. Um, I'm gonna turn the comments off during my talk just so that I can get through my material and then I'll turn them on at the end so that um, I can maybe take a few questions. I'm gonna try to cover everything so that I kind of answer your questions, but I know you're probably gonna have very specific situations like, you know, with your personal family members. So I encourage you to take whatever information I give to you tonight and maybe go see a professional if you feel like you have more questions or you're unsure. Um, I really can't, like if you message me privately, I really can't, um, answer your questions because you're not my client. I don't have enough background. I don't know your story. So I can't give you any more guidance than the general guidance I'm giving you here tonight. So I'm going to try to cover everything. If you have more questions, if they're general or it's a clarification, you can ask me. But if it's very specific about like your personal thing with your mom or your sister or your mother-in-law, like you're going to have to um, speak to someone who can really get more background on you and, and give you information. So I'm gonna start now and I'm just going to turn off commenting. Um, okay, so boundaries, okay? That's what I'm talking about tonight. And the reason I'm talking about them is because I see again, a need for it. I get so many questions in my ask me and so many messages from people who are really um, struggling with family members and friends and themselves learning how to get the respect that they want and um, get the love that they need and have just positive relationships. And the, the way to get that is through boundaries. So I have my questions here that I'm going to make sure I answer. I'm going to be looking at them just to make sure I cover all the topics that I said I would, but let's start with what are boundaries, right? So when I talk about boundaries, what does that mean? I say it all the time, right? Whenever I get that question, what do I do about my sister, my toxic sister? Boundaries, right? So boundaries are in the physical world, we know what they are. They're easy to see. Boundaries are fences, signs, walls, hedges, right? Things that show us like, you know, th things that say this is the property line, right? This is where the property starts. This is where the property ends or stop here, go here, right? It's pretty clear. It looks different, but it all gives the same message that this is my property, right? And we know that the owner is legally responsible for their property and non-owners are not responsible. Um, so wellness boundaries, and that's what I'm calling the boundaries that pertain to us as people, wellness boundaries, those we can't see, but it's the same thing, right? They're, they're not tangible and they're harder to see, but they're just as important. And those define your mental health and they help you guard it and maintain it. So they are so important. So what are those wellness boundaries, right? We know physical boundaries are the stop signs and the, and the fences and, and walls, but what are tangible wellness, sorry, intangible wellness boundaries? So that defines what is me and what is not me. Right, that's what a boundary is. It shows where I end and someone else begins. And it tells me what I'm responsible for and what I'm not responsible for. So a boundary is really defining my internal property. Um, and I'm gonna get more into that, but basically boundaries are not walls, they are fences. They let the good in and they keep the bad out. So a lot of the time when I say boundaries, people think that means cutting people off, not talking to them, ending relationships. Not at all. Boundaries means improving your relationships by letting people know what you are going to accept and what you are not gonna accept, what you want and what you don't want, what you like and what you don't like. And again, it, it's for you also, boundaries with yourself, what you're willing to let yourself do and what you're not willing to let yourself do. Super important. Sometimes we have bad on the inside and good on the outside and we're not letting it in because of our boundaries, they're too rigid. So sometimes our boundaries can hurt us and that's why it's so important to know what are our boundaries, where are they coming from and to really understand them and, and make them healthy and be willing to work on them. Um, we need to really open up those boundaries to let the good in and keep the bad out. So what, who do we set boundaries with, right? Who or what do we set them with? So we set them with our family and our friends 
um, our spouse and our children, right? We definitely have boundaries with kids. You know, you can't have this, you can't do that. This is what we do, this is what we don't do, right? We're letting them know limits. This is what time bedtime is. Um, work and digital boundaries also in terms of like how we use our phones and our computers and what we let in our house and what we don't let in our house and boundaries with ourselves super important so what happens when I'm not boundaried right so I need to have these boundaries with my family and my friends and basically everyone and everything around me what happens when I'm not boundaried um, you lose yourself that's the first thing you don't you have no self-respect you feel sad you feel like um, your relationships become toxic right sometimes you'll, you'll just have a lot of drama with your friends or your family all the time um, you have the same argument over and over again. You feel resentful, right? You're always doing and doing and doing and no one's appreciating it and no one's giving back or people are mad at you for doing something that you did just for them. Well, it wasn't even about me. I did it just for you. Um, you feel like you don't get respect, right? They're not grateful and they're throwing it back in your face and telling you you did it wrong and you didn't do the way they wanted. Um, you feel tired and upset, sad and anxious, right? That you feel like... You just never feel good, right? So you're giving and giving and you're thinking, I'm supposed to be doing all this amazing, all these acts of kindness. I'm this real like bal chesed, bal chesed, and I feel awful all the time, right? That's a sign that maybe like your boundaries are, are just not good. They're not strong enough. They're not intact. Um, and your other relationships are being affected. That's super important because if your boundaries are constantly being violated and crossed and you feel so bitter and resentful and sad, and maybe it's your boundaries with your... Um, family of origin which is like your parents and your siblings and then you come home after dealing with them and then your immediate family so your spouse and your kids start kind of feeling those negative effects because you're in a bad mood because you had to deal with your mom and and she made you mad and your dad was rude to you and so then you're just irritable and depressed or withdrawn or whatever it is so that's a sign of boundary issues also that it's spilling over into your other relationships um, People who are boundaried own their lives, right? That's important to know. Like when I'm boundaried, I decide what makes me happy. I decide what comes in and what stays out. I decide what makes me feel good. I decide if something doesn't make me feel good, I decide what I'm doing with that, right? Um, they don't feel guilty about making choices and about where they're going. And that's a big thing also. If you're constantly feeling guilty when you're doing things for yourself or you're making a decision that you know it feels good for you, but you're like, oh, but she's gonna be disappointed or she's gonna be mad at me or whatever it is, that's a sign of a boundary issue because you're putting too much responsibility for other people's feelings on yourself. And I'm gonna get into this more. Um, boundary people take other people's feelings into consideration, right? So you're not like a total jerk that you don't care what people think, um, but they are making choices not out of guilt but out of good for themselves and for other people right so they're not making a choice that benefits someone because they feel like they don't want to you know get in a fight but they're doing it because you know what this works for me and it works for you no problem i can do it um and then if it doesn't work for them then they don't do it um how what happens when you don't have boundaries we just said um how what do boundaries look like Okay, so this is important also. There's so many different types of boundaries, which I want to quickly just go through. And then as I talk more, we're going to go back to um, kind of like talking about what those boundaries are. So boundaries are skin. That's the most basic boundary, right? Keeps the good in, the bad out, right? So we, if you, if you get a cut, then bad comes in, right? But then your body tries to fight it and fights that infection and keeps that bad out. So that's your skin. And sometimes... Um, victims of sexual abuse have poor sense of boundary, right? They were learned, they were taught early in life that their property did not begin at their skin and that people could just do whatever they wanted with them. So that's why we have to really teach kids about personal space and personal boundaries. And that's why when I talk about forced affection, making your kids hug or kiss someone they don't want to, you're violating a very basic boundary of theirs, which is their physical space and their skin. So we really have to honor that. Like, you don't want to hug Uncle Joe? You don't have to. You don't want to give Grandma a kiss? That's okay. High five or, you know what, she doesn't want to give you a kiss today. We're honoring their boundaries and teaching them very early on that they're just not like a free-for-all for everybody. And that's super important in terms of keeping them safe teaching them consent, and teaching them what's right and wrong, right? And again, you get more into that safety stuff with them about sexual abuse. You tell them nobody can touch you in a way that you don't want, or nobody can touch you in a place that, you know, I that is not appropriate for you to be touched. And you're allowed to say 
that's my personal space, like I'm not okay with that, right? Just knowing what's right and what's not right. Um, words, right? That's like a pretty basic one also. You can create positive defenses with words, or protect defenses, sorry, with words. You can say like, you know what, I don't, I don't like when you talk to me that way, so I'm not gonna be able to have a conversation with you if you're gonna be disrespectful. Or you could just say, no, that doesn't work for me. Or guys, I really don't like when we go to that restaurant. I don't like the food there. Can we go somewhere else this time? Instead of always going to that same restaurant that you hate, but you're nervous to say, I wanna go somewhere else because you don't want them to be upset or maybe stop inviting you. Let your friends know you wanna try a new restaurant, right? That's a boundary. How crazy is that? Kind of in, like letting your friends know what you want. Hey, I don't like that place. Can we try somewhere new? Really basic, but sometimes so hard for people to do. Um, Geographical distance, right? Removing yourself from a situation. Sometimes when things get hard with somebody, with a family member, with a friend, you need to create physical space. You need to just remove yourself from the conversation, from wherever you're at, you need to just get out of their sight, not have them near you. And that's super important to know that that's a boundary also, creating that space, protecting yourself. Um, time taking time off from a person and making space where you can kind of like figure out what boundaries need fixing and what exactly is going on. Also important, time apart can improve relationships. And we know that sometimes we say, you know what, like I just need a break, things are getting too crazy, we're fighting all the time, let's just take a break. And sometimes that can create a sense of appreciation, I missed you, or sometimes it gives us clarity that maybe the relationship is not so good. So time can be a great thing. Um, emotional distance, right? That's a temporary boundary. We don't, we don't encourage, I would never encourage someone to have a permanent emotional boundary unless you need to have that. Um, but it gives your heart, your heart space to kind of like heal and be safe. So you need that, right? And that's, that's a positive thing. Um, people kind of sometimes need to thaw out and, and figure out you know, what they wanna do with their relationship. And I think that's important. Sometimes it also gives the person that you're taking space from the opportunity to think about like, why does this person want space from me? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And hopefully if they are someone who values your relationship with them, they start thinking about what they did and um, how they can improve it. And the last thing that's important also in boundaries is that you need other people, right? And this is super important. If you're gonna set a boundary with a family member or with a friend, but especially with a family member, you need other people to help you set it and maintain it. So if you're gonna, let's, you know, for example, the most common example I'm, I'm getting from all my messages is, let's say you have a difficult parent or in-law um, or sibling, and you need to set boundaries with the sibling. You really, it's super toxic, it's always negative, there's so much fighting and drama, they don't appreciate you, they're, you know, really manipulative. Um, so you need to, together with your spouse, say, okay, like we can't deal with this anymore with, you know, whoever, with um, Sam. We need to like end this drama right now. We're setting up this boundary and we're making sure that we stick to it. And then you together, you make sure it gives you the strength to say no. It gives you the strength to stick to that boundary. So if your spouse or whoever it is is supporting you and saying, remember, like, you don't want to go there again. Remember what happens if you give into this again. I know they're telling you they're different or it looks like they're so great, but remember this this boundary, you need to protect yourself. Then it'll be easier for you to stick to that boundary. Um, and I think it's so important to remember that like our most basic need as humans is to have a relationship. So I'm not telling you cut off relationships. That's not, again, that's not what boundaries are. It's not about cutting off relationships and not talking to people and telling them you can't do this and get out of my life. Not at all. What it's doing is it's ending suffering in relationships. It's making relationships more positive because people are forced to take responsibility for themselves and their behavior. They're forced to be respectful. They're forced to be kind. Um, and then there's no blame game. Like if I'm responsible for me and you're responsible for you and I'm responsible for how I feel and you're responsible for how you feel, we can't all, we can't have this conflict of like, well, you did this to me and you did this to me and you're awful. And I, there's just none of that. It just doesn't happen because we're being responsible for ourselves. Um, and the last thing about boundaries, what you need is again, consequences. You need to back up the boundaries that you set in place with consequences. So if you say to your mother, let's say, um, mom, I'm not gonna come 
visit you with the kids if like the whole time you just like insult them and talk about their awful eating habits it's like not good for them then that means the next time you come if she's saying that then you say mom like we we can't come again you know you're welcome to come to our house and we'll see how that goes but I can't we can't come it's really harmful to the kids and and I love you and and this hurts me but it's damaging the kids to hear your negative comments all the time. I just can't do it to them. And then that means that when she calls you the next week, because she doesn't, she doesn't believe you that you set boundaries. Yeah, right. Who are you, you wimp? You don't set boundaries. Then you say, Mom, remember what I said? We're not coming. I'm sorry. It's just too hard for us. And that's going to be very hard for you. And that's going to be very scary for you. And you're going to be afraid of standing up to your mom. And you're going to be afraid of what the consequences are. Is she not going to talk to me? Is she going to cut me off? Is she not going to invite me on the family cruise that we're going on in Hanukkah time? You know, but you have to also be willing to accept the consequences of whatever happens um, whatever their reaction is, because you have to understand that your boundary is super important. Um, so how do I set boundaries, right? So I know that I need them. I know that these are the things that, this is what boundaries look like, right? That it's taking time away, that it's creating space, that it's um, words that I can use, that it's uh, emotional distance, that I need other people to help me set them, that it's about consequences and follow-up and really sticking to my word. So how do I set those boundaries? So you have to identify what boundary you want to see. So if you have a mother-in-law who's always meddling in your marriage and getting in the way, right, we know that from like a Torah standpoint, from a Jewish law standpoint, like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Like your marriage comes first. So you have to set that boundary of whatever it means. Again, it, I don't, I'm trying to be general because I can't be so specific because there's so much. But it could be a matter of just saying, you know what, mom, why don't you come to us so that it's on your territory. And sometimes that changes the dynamic because it's your territory. So sometimes parents or in-laws are a little bit more respectful when it's not their home. So you might have to do that. Or you might have to limit your visit time when you're there. So if you normally go the whole day and spend the whole day at your in-laws and you're at the pool and you're barbecuing and you're this and you're that, you only come for the morning. We're just going to come for brunch. The kids have plans afterwards. We'll be there for a couple hours. You limit your time. You know, or if you're always with them for every single holiday, you say, you know what, we're only going to come for, you know, this holiday this year. And it's only going to be the first days. We're actually going to stay home this year. Or if you're always going to them and, and you don't like that, again, you can say, why don't you guys come to us? It just works better. And again, if you know that sometimes that dynamic shifts, that power dynamic shifts when they're in your space, do that. Have them by you instead. But again, you're, it's going to be trial and error. You're going to have to see what it is. I don't encourage you to say, forget it, we're never going to your parents again. They're the worst. They're awful. They're terrible. And we're never going to my parents. They're so horrible. You have to do set little boundaries and see what works. And then if those little boundaries are not being honored or they're not working, then you have to set tougher boundaries, right? Um, and I think also just by setting little boundaries, also you kind of get used to like standing up for yourself and saying, no, this isn't okay. And saying, this is what we, what we want and this is what we expect and this is what we're asking for. So that's important to start identifying what do you want to see. So what do I want to see? I want more respect or I want less drama or I want, what I, I want you to speak more nicely to me right? To my spouse, let's say. I want my wife to talk nicely to me. I want my husband not to yell at me when we argue. Um, acknowledge why you allowed the issue to occur, right? So you have to, again, boundaries are about taking responsibility. So what happened that this is like something that is a dynamic in our relationship now? How did it get to this? And that's going to be taking, that's going to take a lot of you being honest about what you've allowed, right? So if you have a spouse who never comes home at night, like they don't show up till 11 o'clock at night, three o'clock in the morning. You have to look back at like, when did this behavior start? And what boundary did I not put in place to prevent this? What could I have done way back in the beginning that first time to say like, this is not okay with me. I'm not going to live like this. And a lot of the time we didn't want to avoid conflict, right? That was our boundary issue. You didn't want to avoid conflict. You didn't want to have a fight. You didn't want to ruffle feathers. You didn't want to make her or him upset. So you didn't say anything. But then it became this habit of never coming home at night and never showing up for dinner and not helping with the kids. And then suddenly, 15 years down the line, this is your life now and you're super resentful and bitter. So boundaries are so important that the minute you see something you don't like, you have to communicate in a positive way. It's not aggressive, it's not attacking, it's just being assertive, which is saying what you need and saying, you know what, 
I, like I get it sometimes you have to stay late at the office but can you give me a call and let me know that you're gonna be late and can, is there a way that we can make it that this is not an always like an always thing you know um, and again that's given that that's not their job schedule and whatever like if you know that they're just not coming home and being inconsiderate that's that's a boundary that you need to put in place then you have to think about what could get in the way of me implementing this boundary right you have to know the person you're dealing with what's gonna what could possibly make it that I can't put this boundary in place am I gonna get pushed back am I gonna have a fight am I what's gonna stop me from doing it and then you have to think about how you're gonna respond to that so you really have to be prepared it's gonna be a lot of like taking notes and trying to figure out how you're going to respond when you put this boundary in place and they don't like it um, and then you put the boundary in place and then you give yourself credit for being brave, right? So you put that boundary in place and you make sure that you are consistent and that what you say means business. And again, this is like a parenting thing, right? Think about it. And, I, and sometimes I tell my clients, like, think of <coughs> whoever you're trying to set the boundary with as like a child. That when you say something, you have to mean it because the minute you give that little, uh, they know that your word means nothing. And that sets a tone in the relationship for disrespect for not really caring about what you say and that's not something you want so you have to really make sure that you put that boundary in place and you stick to it and then if you you'll know you know boundaries are really like a litmus test for the value that a person puts on our relationship because if they're not respecting our boundaries then that means that they don't value us like that they don't want to be in our lives that they only wanted to be around us because they were getting what they wanted from us and that our needs are not important um, so I think that that's important to think about and I think that we also need to realize that sometimes we're so afraid to be alone that we allow ourselves to be hurt. We're afraid to be, you know, not close with our sister or that our mom's going to be mad at us or, you know, that we're not going to be invited somewhere by, by our friends if we tell them something that we think. So we just keep our mouths shut and we stay resentful and we don't say anything and I feel like that's very difficult. Um, to continue doing because then you end up hating yourself, right? So they're all happy because you're never complaining, you're doing whatever they want, but you are miserable and resentful and not feeling sincere in your relationship and that's really hard. Um, so I wanna just focus a little bit on family because again, this is really where people have the hardest time setting boundaries with your friends. Sometimes it's easier to set boundaries because like life is busy sometimes we don't really get to spend time with them, friends come and go, okay, she didn't like what I said, whatever you know sometimes we're we can get over it a little bit easier family it's really really hard because we are we're just attached to them for life right that's your blood and and there's just a lot of um connection that's not so easy to just dismiss right um and again i i never advocate for just like cutting off a relationship but there are times when a when a relationship is so toxic and your boundaries are constantly violated that you need to then say, I, I can't continue this relationship at all. And estrangement, um, I could do a whole other live on that, but estrangement does not happen overnight. It happens over years and years of abuse and emotional and, and maybe physical um, and neglect and trauma and pain. It's just like a roller coaster where finally a person says, I can't do this anymore. I can't, it's just not good for me. It's not good for my family. It's not good for whoever. So estrangement is not something that happens really with boundaries. Like that's not something that, you know, when I talk about boundaries, I'm like, oh, cut them off. That is something that would come after many boundary violations. And when you see that a person is just not willing to respect you, that you might have to take that emotional distance and then keep that emotional distance for your own safety and your own protection. Um, but again, you have to talk to a therapist. I would never say just on your own decide, like really get guidance, take objective um, ad advice and opinions and, and really think about like, what is this doing to me um, or my family or my marriage? Like, how is it ruining my life? And if it's really impactful in a negative way, then that's where estrangement would come in. But signs of lack of boundaries with your family of origin, which is the family you grew up in. So um, this is actually in the book Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud and John Townsend. Um, they are two psychologists who talk about boundaries. The book that, that I got this particular bit of information from is um, their book called Boundaries. It's a really Christian book. 
Um, so if you can ignore, if you're not Christian, if you can ignore all like the references to um, the New Testament, it's still a great book. You can even apply some of the references to the New Testament to your life, but um, it's pretty Christian. So I had to like do a little bit of filtering just because I'm not Christian. So those principles don't apply to me, but some of them did. Anyway, so they talk about signs of boundaries, um, signs, of, signs, signs of boundary issues in your family of origin. So the first one they talk about is um, catching the virus. And that's what I talked about when I said that. Sometimes like if your spouse or, or you go visit your family and you're just in a bad mood when you're with them, or even afterwards, you're just like so angry and so stressed out, um, that's, that's showing a sign of poor emotional boundaries with your family, right? That when you have contact with them, you catch something from them, right? And you pass it on to your immediate family this your family has this power to negatively impact you and then it has this trickle down effect that's a sign of poor boundaries that something when your relationship with one person has the power to negatively affect your relationship with others you're giving way too much power to that relationship and that's a bad sign that means that there's some kind of boundary issue so that's important to know if that's happening in your family that when you're when you go to your parents or you go to your in-laws or you go to your sister and you're just like in a bad mood or your husband's just so angry you have to start looking at that like something's up like this is like just a toxic environment we need to put boundaries in place does it mean we never go to their house again no but it means we need to start looking at why things feel so yuck afterwards and we need to start fixing it um second fiddle right so one spouse feels like they're the leftovers right that their mates their spouse's allegiance is to their parents or to their siblings like all they care about is talking to their sister or their brother all they care about is helping their mom and dad and like there's nothing left for me and the kids, right? Um, for a marriage to work, you need to loosen your ties with your family of origin. Just the fact, like you have to make your immediate family first, your spouse and kids come first. And then of course, you have a relationship with your original family, your family of origin, but again, you make those boundaries clear. Mom, I would love to come over, but I gotta do homework with the kids. If it works, I'll, you know, I'll come later. Otherwise, can we reschedule, right? Mom, I would love to help you make that phone call about the cable, but I gotta make dinner and you know, Jeff is out and there's a million things flying, so I can't do it for you right now. Can someone else help you? If not, I'm happy to do it at nine o'clock. Doesn't mean you drop everything, do whatever your mom wants, you have to do it now. You, it has to be reasonable for you that you are in the middle of something. You're not saying, no, Ma, do it yourself, forget you, you're always asking me for stuff, but you're saying, this doesn't work for me right now. I'm happy to help, but I have priorities too. and this is my family right now or even myself I just can't do it because I'm working on something or I have a work responsibility or I have something that I was gonna go out with my friends and take care of myself and this is conflicting maybe I could do it after or before or whatever it is right family should not be causing your immediate family to play second fiddle they need to come first your spouse needs to come first and marriages do fall apart because you know, so someone, a uh, uh, wife is super close with her dad and like that's all she does is talk to her dad and compare her husband to her dad all day long and that makes her husband feel like a loser and a whatever and it ruins the relationship. So that's important to look at. If that's happening, I think we need to reevaluate what's going on with our family because it's, it's ruining our relationship. Um, there's the concept of financial boundaries in a family, right? That there's kids who are like still mooching off their parents. Adults, what am I saying? Adults who are still mooching off their parents. Um, they're not standing on their own financially. And you know, the parents want to help out, great. But if a child, an adult child, is not able to take care of their own finances and their own life, that's a boundary issue. But if you see that your parents are doing that with your sister or your brother, you don't get involved. You don't start telling them like, ma, like you're enabling him. This is terror, this is enmeshment. What are you doing? Your boundary is I'm staying out of this. This is not my problem. If they wanna do that with my brother, like I can let them know that I, I think it's wrong and I don't think it's healthy, but then I leave it alone. And I don't get angry and focus on, oh my God, they're giving him money again. Oh my, they're just gonna keep ruining him. This is their decision. It's not my child. I wouldn't do it. Mom and dad, you wanna do that stuff? 
it is what it is. And if it bothers you to see it, then you have to put up that boundary so that you don't know about it and you don't hear about it and you don't see it so that you don't get angry because it's not your problem. Don't take responsibility for your brother's issues or your sister's issues. Ugh, they're always cleaning up her kids and cleaning up her mess and that's why she can't keep it together as a mom because they never make her take any responsibility. Not your problem, not your problem, stay out of it. Um, and that's kind of like that idea of that Mesh family, of the perpetual child, that they just always are doing everything for them and never letting them grow up. And, you know, it happens in families that there's relationships like that. Just leave it alone. Don't get involved, and you focus on your own family. Um, there's also the idea of triangulation, right, where families are triangulating which means one is talking to the other about the other and and talking badly about them and making issues and and i'm mad at him and he and she's such a jerk and blah 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 and then one's caught in the middle and feeling like oh i don't know like this one's saying bad things about this one in families the boundary needs to be we are willing to communicate with each other so i'm not going to say to her to her anything that i wouldn't say to you say anything to you that i wouldn't to her sorry that i wouldn't say to your face so we need to communicate don't try don't say anything to another family member that you're not going to say directly to the person that you're upset with so that's going to be your boundary when i'm upset with someone in my family i'm going to tell them i'm going to tell my sister you know what i'm i'm upset at you that you told me you were going to come and then you didn't you ditched me that made me upset talk to her don't go to your other brother and be like oh she always does this to me she's so disgusting and oh she's such a flake go to your sister you know what kate like you do this to me i don't like it what what's up with that Talk to her. Um, and then codependent relationships with, with parents also, right? That kids sometimes are responsible for their parents um, when they're growing up. Their, their parents put this like burden on them to be, um, to be kind of like their caretakers, which is like super inappropriate, but then that creates those boundary issues later on in life where you feel responsible for your parents' emotional needs and like you're always trying to make them happy and always trying to make sure that like they're okay, which is a nice thing, but again, you're not responsible for their emotional well-being. Um, good boundaries prevent resentment, which is super important, right? Giving is good, but you have to make sure that it's the proper amount, right? So it has to be what you can give for your resources. And the idea of no good deed goes unpunished tells me that that's someone who lacks boundaries. If you're feeling like you do good things for people and they never appreciate it and, you're all, and they're always like resentful and throwing it back in your face, then that means that you're not setting up good boundaries when you do kind things for people, that it's not coming from a place of like, you know, you wanna do something nice but you have a limit, it's coming like you're overdoing it and you're doing way too much and you're doing for the wrong people maybe or in the wrong way and that's why no good deed go goes unpunished because you don't have the right boundaries. So it's important to know what you're in control of, right? I'm in control of my feelings, my attitudes and beliefs, my choices, my behaviors, my values, my thoughts and my desires, nobody else's. So I can only control that. And so if I'm setting up a boundary, that means that I'm letting people know what I am willing to accept, what I am willing to feel, what I'm okay with. If you choose not to do that, that's your choice. I can't control that. But then I can control how I'm going to respond to that. So if I tell you that I don't want you to speak not nicely to me in front of the kids and you continue to, then I'm going to walk away and that's going to be the end of our discussion. And you can do that with a spouse. You can do that with a parent, whatever it is. I asked you to speak to me nicely and you're not doing it. I can't continue this conversation. Boundary. You're allowed to do that. You should be doing that. Um, some myths about boundaries that I just want to talk about and then I'm just going to talk about how we set boundaries with kids is a lot of people think that if they set boundaries, they're being selfish. Not at all. Real boundaries help you to care for people in a better way. You are a better friend if you are setting boundaries. The most caring people are also the most boundaried because you're able to give wholeheartedly. There's no resentment. It's coming from a place of really wanting to give and giving happily when you're boundaryed, right? Because it's not about guilt and it's not about, Ugh, I really can't be doing this, but I, I have to because I can't say no. It's coming from, yeah, I wanna do this and it works for me and, and this is how much I can give and, and I'm gonna give that and I'm gonna feel great about it and I'm not gonna question it. Um, some people think that boundaries are, that if they set boundaries, that they're automatically gonna be hurt by other people. Um, they're so terrified of the consequences that they, they don't even set the boundaries and that's, important to kind of remember here where I said that boundaries are like a litmus test for your relationships um, 
you're going to see who really wants to be in your life. Did they only like it that you said yes to them and did whatever they wanted? And the minute you were like, hey, 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 I'm not okay with this, they disappeared. Then you know that they didn't care about you. So you might be hurt by that. But at the same time, you're removing relationships from your life that are not good for you, that weren't good for you to begin with. And they were actually harming you because you felt like I need to set up a boundary with this person. Um, some people worry that if they set boundaries, they're going to hurt other people. So again, somebody might be hurt because nobody likes to hear the word no, but you're not attacking a person. You're not being mean or cruel. You're not being controlling. You're just trying to keep your mental health from being trampled on. So you're saying no to people because you want them to be responsible for themselves. You don't want to be fixing their lives all the time. You don't want to be in charge of their happiness for them. You want to be focusing on your happiness. And if it doesn't make you happy to always try to make everyone else happy, then you shouldn't be doing it. Um, sometimes people think that boundaries mean that you're angry, right? That they're like confrontational and fighting. And again, boundaries sometimes can cause people to be angry when they, when you set a boundary, you might start feeling like bitter and resentful, but that's because you start realizing the extent of the hurt and violations that were going on, right? And sometimes when people push back against that boundary, then you do get angry because you're like, wow, I see they really did not respect me at all. Like they don't care about me. So sometimes that'll make you be angry, but Emotions are telling you something, so don't run away from that. Don't say, oh, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm getting mad. No, boundaries will decrease your anger, and it'll help you to feel more in control of your life and your values, so you stick to that, that, to that, to that boundary. So at first, you're going to feel mad and super resentful, and ugh, see, ugh, disgusting, and look how mean, and, but you stick with it, and eventually, it doesn't even bother you anymore. Yeah, they are disrespectful, and I'm so glad that I finally have the guts to stand up and say, I'm not taking this anymore. I can't do this. This is my line in the sand. This is what I need. And if you can't give that to me, then I'm going to have to make some serious changes to how we interact. Um, sometimes people think also that if people set boundaries with them, that it's going to hurt them. Again, it's hard to accept the boundaries of other people. But you have to remember that um, just like you want people to respect your boundaries, you should respect other people's. And I think it's even harder when when boundaries were set on us as in childhood that were like not so healthy, you know? So we were told no, 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 no all the time just for the sake of hearing no. So sometimes that, because it felt like a rejection we, when we were young, it feels like a rejection when we're older too. So that's important to remember. Like they're not saying this, that they're not saying they can't do it because they don't care about me. They're saying they can't do it because it doesn't work for them or because it's just not convenient. It's not because they don't like me, you know? And a lot of the time that's why we say yes. Cause we're like, Oh, I don't want them to think that I don't like them. I don't want them to feel bad, but we're projecting. Don't project and don't think that don't project your injuries onto other people. Right. And don't, don't let them, don't think that they're also feeling that way. That's your own insecurities and your own baggage. Um, and again, like don't be over dependent on someone else, expecting someone else to be in charge of your happiness. So they can put a boundary and you can say, okay, I'm okay with that. Cause again, boundaries are, I'm responsible for me. So you can set a boundary and that's okay. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make me happy or sad. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with that. Um, boundaries cause feeling of hurt, uh, sorry, feelings of guilt. So sometimes they can do that because if you think that when people do something nice for you, you owe them something, then you're going to feel guilty when you're like, I, I, you know what? It doesn't work for me to drive four hours to Lakewood to go look at, you know, bedding for you because you cooked dinner for me when I had a baby. Like if you feel like someone does something nice for you and then you owe them something, then you're thinking you're not thinking of love being accepted as a gift. You're thinking that there's strings attached. There's like this debt that exists that doesn't exist. Um, and you're creating this like idea that you owe people something. If they're nice to you, you owe them something. But really all we owe people is just thanks and being grateful and being kind and being nice. And being kind and nice doesn't mean overextending yourself and like giving away your bank account and giving up hours of your life to do things that are not convenient for you that have nothing to do with you that doesn't work for you. So you have to know that it's not, those feelings of guilt, again, they're not coming from anywhere valid. It's coming from your mistaken idea that when someone does something nice for you, you owe them something. And again, that probably stems from when you were young, feeling like you had to like work to be treated nicely or that if they, your parents did something nice for you, like, well, you better do this or you better do that. So you have to look at that. Um, and the last thing is that sometimes people think boundaries are permanent, right? So I'm afraid of burning my bridges if I put up a boundary. And again, you own your boundaries. 
they don't own you. So you can renegotiate a boundary at any time. So yeah, mom, we're only going to come to you for, you know, a couple hours on Sunday. If things are working out and it's going well, that boundary, you can extend that time that you're there on Sunday. Or if the last time you went for a, a holiday, a chag, and it was nice, you can say, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll try another one and see how it goes. And then if it's a disaster, obviously you go back to those original boundaries, but maybe your family is learning to respect you and they're learning to see like, okay, you know what? We have to start treating Rachel with respect. We have to start like understanding that she has certain standards that if we want her in our lives, we have to stick to. So that's really important for you to remember. Um, how to deal when you're when your boundaries are disrespected. I mean, I think I spoke about that a little, but I'll talk about it again. Um, when your boundaries are being disrespected, again, you have to follow up with that consequence right away. This is, you know, I said that this is what we were going to do. Like, I, I can't, you know, I'm not going to be, we're not going to come over or we're not going to stay so long or we're not going to be able to come to you. Maybe you come to us or we're just going to get together with friends this year instead of doing that whole big family thing. It just doesn't work for us. And then really doing it and working on not feeling guilty because you're doing what's best for you and you're doing what's best for your family and with your spouse also, you know, so one of the examples that I read in his book Boundaries, which, you know, it seems a little tough, but it made sense, was that he was saying that there was one client he had who her husband would like never come home on time for dinner. Like he just didn't care and he wouldn't call and he wouldn't tell her where he was. And fine, and she was always like waiting and waiting and waiting till 10 o'clock to eat dinner with him. And finally she was like, you know what? Like, what am I doing? So she started like eating dinner with her kids and she would put dinner in the fridge for him. And when he came home, she said, you're welcome to warm it up. And like, I ate already. So, you know, like, I'll sit with you, but like, you know, maybe I'll sit with you, but she was hurt. So she actually didn't sit with him. And I think that gave a powerful message because in the end, her husband realized he needs to be more courteous and he needs to be more thoughtful and say, I'm running late. Do you mind, you know, just go ahead and eat with the kids. When I come home, you know, I'll warm it up. And again, setting those boundaries in place of like, you have to respect me. And if you're running late or you're not going to be home, you have to tell me. It's not like you're some like bachelor that you don't have anyone to think about or answer to. And I think sometimes in marriages, we do that. We give our spouse a lot of leeway to just be disrespectful or not courteous or not thoughtful. And then we turn around 10 years later and you're saying, how did this happen? Like, I don't understand. Like, why is he behaving this way? Why is she behaving this way? Again, look back, start being really honest with yourself and say, where did I like not put that boundary into place that I should have? And that's why it's so important in all your relationships to start standing up again, not in an aggressive way. You're not fighting. It's not arguing, but it's standing up and communicating right away your needs. I don't like that. I don't like when you speak to me that way, or I don't like when you get mad at me and you don't talk to me. Please speak to me. Don't cut me off like that. And telling your kids the same thing. I don't like when you get angry at your sister and you hit her. That's not okay. We don't do that. This is how we handle it. Come sit down and talk with her. Or come and tell me what's going on. Setting boundaries for them. You can't hit people. That's not what we do. And letting them know like real life, right? When you can't commit to something, not committing to it, right? Not saying like, oh yeah, okay, I'll do that 600 hours of whatever for the school you know mom's organization and you have 7,000 other things to do but you're worried to say no because what kind of mom am I if I'm not involved in the school you're a mom that has priorities and that you know that you cannot pour from an empty glass so if you're over committing yourself to a thousand different things you're not going to be okay and you're not going to be able to do it so I'm just turning my commenting back on and if you had any other questions I'll let you ask them but I think that um some of the boundaries that we need to have in marriages, again, I just want to focus on that, is um, emotional boundaries, which are love and honesty and faithfulness and self-control and communication and no physical abuse. Um, don't be rude or yell. Being open. Um, positive conversations. Willing to change yourself. Yes, I'm going to save it. Be willing to change yourself. Forgive. That's a big one in marriage. Um, to be willing to forgive your spouse. And that again, that's on you. Sometimes it's challenging, but you have to be humble enough to forgive your spouse. Um, football on Sundays, hey, you know, you gotta decide what's the boundary. Maybe you could DVR it and watch it later or watch some of it now. Um, 
how does unconditional love work with boundaries with kids? Because when you set a boundary with a child, you're letting them know this is acceptable or unacceptable. And even if they deviate from that, again, you're not cutting them off. I'm not going to speak to you because you didn't honor that boundary. You're saying, I'm disappointed. You know that that's not the rules. Like, I know you can do better. You love them no matter what. I don't like what you did, but I still love you, right? Um... What if you set a boundary, but the other party won't respect it or can't follow it? So again, what do we do when our our boundaries are not being respected? Um, you have to start looking at that relationship and say, maybe this is something that I need to have stronger boundaries with. You know, maybe I need to reinforce that boundary a little bit more and make it a little bit tougher um, because this person clearly does not have respect for me. Um, and sometimes relationships get lost because a person does not want to respect your boundaries and it happens when you know people go around lying about you how do you let it go and not let it bother you i mean you have to this is a confidence thing you're being you're giving too much power again to the things that they're saying for you have to kind of look at yourself they're ruining your name or or others opinions so whoever is going to believe those lies about you again you have to look at that is that someone that i that is important to me and that I want to be friends with, if they're going to believe lies about me, probably not. And you have to be confident about who you are and know who you are, that if people are talking badly about you and saying things about you, that you say, you know what, I know the truth and I know what kind of person I am. So let them talk about me. Let them say what they want about me and what I've done or who I am. But I know at the end of the day that I'm a good person and that I'm doing the right thing. So I'm not going to let it bother me. And you just have to kind of like have faith in yourself. And if you have belief in God, have faith in God, that that you're doing the right thing and eventually they'll just stop. Like they'll just get bored of talking about you. And again, the people that matter are not going to believe whatever they're saying. You don't want to be friends with someone who, who would believe those lies. How do you balance being flexible and boundaries? Because again, boundaries are not like super rigid, mean, awful, like you... And you can be more flexible when you have boundaries because you're more relaxed because you're saying this is what I'm gonna this is what's up and hey if things get better I can loosen up that boundary a little bit if things are not better I'm gonna have to tighten it up a little bit but we're not being rigid like that's it this is the boundary I'm setting and I'm not changing it I said again boundaries are not permanent um there there's something that you're willing to look at and say can I change this can I make this is the relationship getting better and can I you know give a little bit more leeway now because now they're seeing they're respecting me and they're changing their behavior and and I'm changing my behavior also again you're taking responsibility for yourself because you can't change them you can only change what you do so that you don't have to you don't have to be um subjected to that behavior what if you lost it if you lost it at your kid already how can you remedy that and make sure your child feels his boundaries are respected by apologizing and not doing it again, taking responsibility for yourself and saying, I'm so sorry I screamed at you. That was wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong to yell at someone when you're mad. I should have walked away. And I love you and I'm going to do better. And please know that even if I'm angry and I'm yelling, I love you no matter what. What if your translation of boundaries comes off as disrespectful? Kissing grandpa. You need to teach the kids to respect grandpa. So again, there are going to be relatives that tell you that what you're doing is disrespectful. You're going to get the guilt trip. What about respecting your mother? What about keep it of the aim? What? They're not kissing their grandfather? That's disgusting. And again, you're going to have to anticipate these reactions and you're going to say, I'm sorry that you're hurt, but grandpa, we're teaching the kids about body safety. And you know, in this day and age, you know, you have to teach kids boundaries. You have to teach them to you know be able to say no and to have that respected i know that you totally understand what we're doing grandpa i'm sorry if they don't want to give you a kiss like they love you anyway and again being respectful not being like grandpa get the heck over it dude you know take your 90 year old you're like you understand he's upset he doesn't understand you're being you're showing empathy but you're also respecting that your kids are allowed to say no and that's important for them to learn that they have the power of no, that they're allowed to say no and that it's going to be respected um, and you're going to validate them and you're going to teach them when your sister says stop, you stop. You don't, do, you don't bother her anymore. You don't tickle her anymore. You leave her alone. Um, so I'm just seeing I missed some questions here. Um, how can 
one established boundaries with family of origin if it wasn't there before how do you break the pattern so that's hard you have to start doing it but you have to start saying what's the pattern here what goes on in my family that I don't have these boundaries what is it that we do that needs fixing because I can't take this anymore and then slowly little by little don't start setting massive boundaries little things that you start doing to start making things better for you um, and and it'll get better for you eventually you mentioned that people don't respect your boundaries, don't respect you. Isn't it possible that some people are not doing it out of respect? Rather, they were never taught and given the skills? Yes, but that means they were not taught to respect people's boundaries and they were not taught to respect people's no, right? That they think that no means, well, I can just try harder. No, when I say no, that means no. And that's why it's important for you to teach that to your kids. When somebody says no or somebody says stop, that means no and that means stop. Leave them alone. Don't bother them. Stop nudging them. When I say no to you, don't ask me 10,000 times and then I give in because then that teaches that there's no value to the word no or stop or I don't like that. So that's why you're not doing a service to your kids by giving in and not being consistent with your word. You're just causing harm to them when they're adults. Like, so it's not about like just, you know, when they're kids, like everything that we do impacts them as they're adults. So think about that when you just give in. Um, there are a lot of cultural expectations with greetings. Kissing is showing a show. I, I understand it's a show of respect in certain communities, and I get that a lot from people who say, like, listen, I'm, you know, I'm Sparty, I'm Bukhari, and I'm whatever. And I say, okay, well, it's a new day and age, and you have to tell your family members, I'm not telling my kids to kiss you if they don't want to. I'm sorry. It's just not, they're not comfortable with it and their safety comes first. And please know that it's not out of disrespect. It's out of respect for my kids and their safety. We love you no matter what. How do you enforce boundaries with young kids? Again, that's like a parenting thing, right? That you, your kids have to know um, that when you say something that you're consistent and you follow through, right? So if you tell them, um, you know, bath time is at eight o'clock, then bath time's at eight o'clock, right? If you say everything off and in bed at, you know, 9.30 in quiet time, then it's 9.30 is quiet time, right? It's that they know that when you say something, you follow through with it. Um, and teaching them also that um, they can have... Um, can you give examples of little things to start with when breaking patterns? So again, like one of the examples I gave was like, you know, if you go to your family every, you know, Sunday and you spend the whole day there, then maybe you could just like go for an hour one Sunday and say, you know what, like, Make play dates for your kids. My kids have play dates or we have stuff to do or, you know, it's not going to work for us to stay the whole afternoon this Sunday. We're just going to go for an hour. And that's what you do or two hours, whatever it is. You start little things like that. Um, and then you might work up to bigger things, like maybe one Sunday not going at all if it's super bothersome to you. Um, or, you know, one holiday staying home and inviting your friends instead of going to your family if it's super stressful to have everyone there together um, and that's upsetting to you. We missed what you said about the kids and boundaries because you were paused. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't remember what the question was. But with teaching your kids boundaries, again, it's all about consistency. It's all about, it's all about what I, I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. And that when I tell you that I'm doing something or that we're not doing something, that's what's happening. And if I tell you that this is a value in our family, this is the value in our family. So that's important to know. Um, your kids have to know that when you tell them that you're doing something, that, that you do them. Um, I'm just reading comments. If it comes to need to for the uh, if it comes to a need to the point for the need of estrangement, how does one even explain to others who will judge from the outside? You don't explain it to others. You don't need to explain it to others. If you have to be estranged from a family member or you are, you don't explain it to anyone. You can just say relationships are complicated, and that's it. You don't have to explain it. What happens when you have a very close friend and all of a sudden she wants boundaries but in a very harsh way? So again, I told, I talked about how boundaries are hard. Like when people set them with us, we're not going to be thrilled. So you can communicate. That's a boundary in a friendship. You can communicate like, whoa, I feel like you're like maybe taking this a little overboard. Can we talk about this? 
Um, but she may not want to talk about it. She may be like, you know, no, this is why I'm setting it. You could ask, why is it, it seems harsh. Why are you being so harsh? And hopefully she'll give you an answer, um, but she might not. And again, like you have to respect that boundary. You're not gonna like it, but you have to respect it. You can try to renegotiate, um, but you have to respect the boundary when it is set. Um, and maybe look at like, why does she feel like she has to set such a harsh boundary? Like, what did I do that made her feel that way? If she's not telling you, um, she should probably tell you. What happens when you had a very close friend? Oh, I read that already. <laughs> if I let you take advantage of me by not setting boundaries early on, she had no clue all along I was re resentful. Is it my fault for not being honest? Or she should have been more aware? So this is a really good point. And I actually should have said this before. You are responsible for the tone in your relationship. If people are taking advantage of you, not to say that they're not responsible for themselves and their behavior, they are, but you are responsible for telling people what you want and what you don't want. So if your spouse is not doing something you like, he's not supposed to be a, man, a mind reader. She's not supposed to be a mind reader. If they're doing things that you don't like or, or not doing things that you do like, you need to tell them. They're not mind readers. And it's so, so well, he should know what I like. She should know what I like. We're married. Tell them what you want. It is not their job to know what you want. It is your job to tell them. And then they decide if they are going to be responsible and do what you want, if it's within their boundaries, right? And it's reasonable. Um, it's not someone else's job to protect my boundaries. No, but it, you know, again, it is important to have support when you set a boundary to know that you have someone there helping you. I really only have a few minutes um, left, but I hope I covered everything that you guys wanted to know. I just wanna quickly summarize. Boundaries, let the good in and keep the bad out. They are not fighting. They are not bitter. They are not resentful. They are clear expectations of like, this is what I will tolerate and this is what I will not tolerate. And they improve relationships because you are able to be yourself and you are able to be happy because you're not overextending yourself and you're not constantly giving and being disrespected and disrespected and not saying what you want you're saying what you want and people then have the opportunity whether you know to to go with that or not go with that or respect it or not respect it but you're saying what's on your mind and you're able to decide if you want to go back to that relationship or you don't want to go back to that relationship and that's something to look at if you're constantly going back to that friendship that they treat you like garbage why do i keep doing that why do i think that that's what i deserve why don't I think that I deserve more? So really looking at that and setting those boundaries in place. I deserve honesty. I deserve respect. I deserve love. I deserve good things. And if I'm not getting them, I have to let it be known that I would like that from my spouse, from my family, from my friends, and then come up with a consequence if that's not going to happen. Just like we come up with consequences with our kids if they don't behave a certain way or they don't get their homework done or whatever it is, we kind of implement those consequences to make sure that they get done whatever they have to get done like same thing here you have to make sure that you are following through and being firm and consistent with what you say is important to you and then hopefully you will be happier for it just setting those boundaries in place and letting people know like this is what i want this is what makes me happy and if you love me and care about me you'll do the same and again if they have a problem with that, that tells you something about the relationship. So I hope that you guys learned something from this. It's such a complicated thing, boundaries, um, but so important to put into place. And again, I'm, guess I'm gonna keep talking about it, but I hope that you learned something tonight and um, I look forward to our next live. Thanks for listening, guys. Good night. And I will save this for 24 hours and I will save it to my YouTube page. Good night.